Okay, so for the last few months, this has been my gaming setup. So this mini PC has an Oculink connection, which means I can connect it to an external graphics card with a dock like this. But not a lot of devices have Oculink, even though it is excellent. I think it should be on loads of devices. But there is this. Uh, so this has Oculink on it, but it also fits into an M.2 slot on a computer like an M.2 slot on a Raspberry Pi. Now I'm going to try this with Windows with this M.2 slot and this graphics card adapter. So just pop that in there. But first of all, let's show you a little bit more of this. So I don't use this monitor, I use my TV, but this is just easier to show you. The monitor is being supplied video from the graphics card. So this is just using the ordinary HDMI out, just like you would on a full size PC. And this has got a, a power supply for the graphics card. And the mini PC, the only connection on that really is just the Oculink. Uh, so that's going out from here into the dock. And that means that all of the video comes out of here. It then uses the graphics card to get much better 3D acceleration and much better video performance. And you get great results even on a mini PC. So let's shut this down. So let's swap this out for this Asus Nook. So this is uh, Intel Ultra Core 7 processor, but it's got no Oculink ports on it anywhere. So what I have to do inside here is disconnect this NVMe drive, which would normally be screwed down, because this is a PCIe 4 slot, which is better for the graphics. And this one is a PCIe 3. As you can see, it sticks out in this configuration. I could use a smaller drive in here. But then if I put the Oculink adapter in, that's how it's going to work. So basically all the videos are going to come through this cable and into my graphics card. And the operating system is running off this NVMe drive. So let's grab that and basically swap it over. So obviously it's easier if it's got an Oculink port. Pop the power in. In fact, it's going to be easier to plug this cable in and then plug it in. So the Oculink cable goes in like that and it clicks into place and then slot it in. This is just to show it working. Obviously normally I would put it back together if I could, but in this case the NVMe drive prevents me from putting the base on this and also the cable does as well. There's quite inventive things people have done with laptops where they've accessed the M.2 slot on the bottom of the on the laptop and been able to connect it in through that and just cut a hole. So now if I switch this on, you can see the graphics card comes on straight away and it started to boot up. So here's some of the gameplay coming through the graphics card and as you can see around about 40 to 50 FPS. The snow looks great in this game. Unfortunately I didn't have my microphone in when I was capturing this. I normally speak while I'm actually playing the game but uh, yeah as you can see it's working pretty well Perfectly playable, no problem with that. And I try and shoot a bird out of the sky and fail miserably. <laughs> so the graphics on this are set to ultra high, so you can see pretty much everything is on ultra high or very high. And let's run a benchmark. So we're getting around about 40 FPS on this. It did drop down to 20 but went up to 128. I don't know why it spiked so much then. But uh, it's looking all right, it's a bit jerky. But remember this is on ultra high settings. And what I'll do is I'll compare the two benchmarks side by side so you can see how well they run together. CPU running at 0%, 1% and the GPU is running at 94, 95%. That water looks great. So if I was playing this, I would, I would lower the settings and try and get up to around about 60 at least for this sort of game. So 43 overall, pretty reasonable for ultra high. So now we're running on integrated graphics. I've restarted without the graphics card connected and I put it on ultra high and we're getting around about 28 FPS, 27, 26. Looks a bit more jerky. But it's still not too bad for this style of game. But obviously it depends what happens when lots of things start going on. And this is where I try and get a bird. I think I did a better shot on this one. No, it wasn't this one. 
Okay, so here's the two running side by side. So the graphics card is at the top and the one running with integrated graphics is on the bottom. And as you can see, we're getting a lot of the time pretty much twice the frame rate, but the bottom screen is definitely more jerky and breaking up on various different things. Yeah, it's, it's much more unstable. So you wouldn't want to play it at the rate of the bottom one but at the top it's much more acceptable. So it's nice to see, so um, that's the results I was hoping I'd get. I wasn't sure how good these adapters would be because they're going through the PCIe slot. Obviously if it's going through a PCIe 3 slot you might get slightly less performance. But it really also depends on the graphics card. So the 1080 I picked because it was pretty cheap. It was £135 for a really quite a decent graphics card. But there can be a bottleneck for the connection that it's going into. There's a, so there's no point in buying a really high-end graphics card and then using it through one of these adapters. If you've got Oculink native on the device, then it's absolutely fine. So at the end of the results, yeah, so 43 versus 24 FPS. So uh, yeah, definitely better performance with the graphics card, which is nice to see. Unfortunately, I've not been able to get this Geekom Air 12 to work. This is an N100 mini PC, and I thought it'd be interesting to see what a real budget mini PC would do. But as you can see, the graphics card didn't come on, and uh, it doesn't seem to wake it up, whatever configuration I've tried, even though it's got a PCIe 3 slot, and the PCIe 3 slot works fine on the Asus. But I've got some more experimenting to do, some more messing about with the BIOS to see if I can get that to work. And I also have an N150 being sent to me, which is a new version of the N100, or rather an upgrade to the N100 coming soon. It's my Raspberry Pi 5 not going through the graphics card at the moment. You can see it's not plugged in at the moment and it's all working fine. If I tap the Windows key, it's coming up and that's working. So if I shut that down, excuse the cats in the background, and I grab the HDMI cable here and plug that into the graphics card. I can unplug this one now. Now plug in the Oculink adapter and switch that on. The graphics card starts up, which I was really surprised at and really pleased about, but nothing on the monitor at the moment. And it usually works as a, a basic display driver when you haven't set the drivers up, but this doesn't give me any video at all. So if I shut that down and swap this out for an Orange Pi 5 Plus, so I can slot that in the bottom here and pop the USB-C in. So the lights come on, but it doesn't actually wake the graphics card. But if I put the HDMI cable into here, it wakes the monitor. So I'm back on the Raspberry Pi 5 now, not going through the graphics card. I'm going to keep trying it, but uh, I don't hold up loads of hope for Windows running with a graphics card on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, Jeff Gillings had some great results running all sorts of things through external graphics cards. Uh, but when we look at the WOR project, which is basically the, this is the UEFI, this is what boots Windows on a Raspberry Pi, it doesn't get any updates anymore. So this is eight months ago, I think was the last one. Yeah, so there are some settings I can play around with in here, but it can be fussy with resolution as it is, so I don't hold up loads of hope. And also the other thing I found, if I go to my downloads, I did download the NVIDIA GeForce Experience. It doesn't seem to like ARM devices. So if I go NVIDIA GeForce Experience and try and download it, you can see it's quite snappy Windows on Raspberry Pi 5 now. It's definitely a lot better than it used to be. I don't let it do updates. Let's just do open. But given how easy it was on the Asus, I really thought maybe it will just work. Ever the optimist. So you can see it starts to try. But I can't explain why it can't get it working on the Geekom Air 12 because that's a Windows device with a PCIe slot. Although looking through some of the information online it looks like some computers need changes to the bios here you go so this is actually the problem i'm getting the operating system in use is not supported by this package so it's windows 11 but it's windows 11 on arm and i didn't get this message 
on the Geekom Air 12, the message I got was that you didn't have the graphics card connected, so it wouldn't let me continue. So I, I think it may be a bit of a stretch to think that it would work, but when you see what Jeff Geeling's done with Linux and uh, extended GPUs, it is very impressive. But I'm not going to spend loads of time trying to get it working on the Pi. I hope that the N150 B-Link mini PC, when that comes through, because if you are looking for something to play games on, I wonder what that will be like with a cheap graphics card, so an old GTX 1080, so I paid £135 second hand. So watch this space, you never know. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.